Hello everybody, welcome to Snyder's Inga. Today we got Dr. Insanity video. Uh, what's funny about this is my friend. Uh, my friend Chris messaged me. I mean like, hey, have you checked out this channel called Dr. Insanity? I'm like, yes. Yes, I have. I react to him a lot. And today we got another one, and this is when missing people realize they've been found. If we don't get run into a lazy jump, hit the lap button, hit subscribe button, comment your thing down below. Let's go. No, not yet, but let's keep it going. Let's go walk around the back. I've been looking all night long. Come on, can y'all come to me? Come to me. Yeah, come to me. There's an opening right here. Come on, kids, come to me. This is the moment cops found missing children just hours before they would have went missing forever. Hey, Jesus, good. He's good. <laughs> and this is just one of four gut-wrenching examples of when missing people got found by cops, starting with this girl who wasn't lost or hiding, but instead kidnapped by a psychopath. He broke into my Las Vegas apartment and stole me from my home. 32-year-old Jack had been planning to kidnap his ex-girlfriend for over a year, or at least that's what he told her as he drove her away in his van kicking and screaming. He just might have gotten away with it too, but unfortunately for him, there were witnesses and police had a description of his vehicle. It still wouldn't be easy though, as all they knew was that the girl was forced from her apartment and appeared to be handcuffed. They found a knife and signs of a struggle in her apartment and cop- They got him and it was some, uh, his trans, uh, partner. I think the, their plan was to bring her to a cave, brainwash her, and force her, her to marry one of them. Fucking bizarre group of people. They're a bizarre group of people, these two guys, these two people were. I don't understand what the hell wrong with them. Cops knew they were on a timer, as Jack was known to be unpredictable and dangerous. Luckily, just 12 hours after she was taken, Jack's van was spotted driving along US Highway 84, and police began the most horrifying stop of their careers. Hey, be here, get on your PA! There is a passenger! There is a passenger! Hey, keep them up! Keep them coming back! Keep them coming back! Hands up! Hands up, passenger! Get on the ground, passenger! All the way! Yeah, I got passenger! I got passenger! That is not the missing girl who stepped out of the car. It's Jack's accomplice, 19-year-old Sophie. They've managed to find and apprehend the suspects, but as it stands, police have no idea if the missing woman is in the car, or even if she's alive. <laughs> Got a camera. Do you need a... Oh yeah. my god, thank you. <laughs> Suddenly, officers spot someone else in the car, and they appear to be restrained like some kind of wild animal. Okay, okay we're gonna get you out of here, okay? I got pictures of her, and I got pictures of the chains. Hold on. Got another hand, okay? Got it? <laughs> he had me earlier and I got him to take him off. Jack had allegedly told his victim he was taking her to a cave, which he and Sophie. Yep, Jack planned to brainwash his victim in the cave for marriage. That is insane. What type of fucked up mind do you have to have for that to be your goal, your plan? Like, let's think about this. What the, why exactly her? Like if you just, if she is, if your relationship with her don't work out, go find someone else. Go find someone else that you want to marry. Don't either brainwash someone in a cave. What some, that is such unnecessary effort. That is not worth all that energy. So fu they're fucking crazy had prepared where he was going to brainwash her into agreeing to marry him. The woman, who was later identified as Jane, was found chained to the floor of the vehicle. Other than the intense mental anguish and trauma of the event, she was unharmed. Sarge, six times. we don't have, I don't got a key for this one, guys. Sarge, I don't got a key for the neck one. Okay. Here it is, here it is. Okay, hold on, give me time. <gasps> Oh, oh my god. 
I was in Las Vegas. He broke into my Las Vegas apartment and stole me from my home. Las Vegas, New Mexico? Nevada. Nevada? He hauled ass. Do you know the guy? Yeah, he's boyfriend. my ex-boyfriend. How did you know? They called us and told us. Who did? I was up at the office trying to run him, see if we had anything on him. He dragged me out of the place and I fought so fucking hard because I was like, this is how you die. And I think a neighbor saw this is insane. I cannot imagine the mental trauma she has. She ain't going near no guy. She probably never dated anyone. one thing. She might not be dating anyone this day day. She probably just like, I ain't dealing with nobody. Nope, not dealing with that. Now, last time I dated a guy, that dragged me out and brainwashed me into a marriage in a cave and shit. Now, I ain't dealing with that, y'all. Off. On me getting dragged out, he choked me out like six times because I kept fighting so hard. Okay, did you lose consciousness when he was choking you? Yes, like six, he choked me out six times. Okay. Kidnapping is a serious offense in Nevada, oh, and of course comes with a heavy p- I'm about to sound like a dick here, but the way that kidnapping should be a serious offense everywhere. There should not be nowhere where kidnapping isn't a serious offense. Please not state in the obvious, but he made it seem like it's it's specifically like it's a real bad thing, it's real serious device. It should be real serious fucking everywhere you kidnapped a person. Punishment. Taking an adult for ransom or with intent to harm is classed as first degree kidnapping and can come with a maximum sentence of life in prison. From what Jane is describing, Jack has caused her harm and had worse in mind. His unhinged behavior was later witnessed as he was taken to jail. You got a favorite him? No, I don't. Why not? I don't know. I've never been into them. What about you? What about Amazing Grace? You like that one? I'll take it. Amazing Grace. This guy is crazy. Straight up fucking psychotic. Like, this guy has lost his fucking mind. This guy is straight up fucking lunacy. Of course, there would be no saving him, as he was later sentenced to a life in prison. His Good. accomplice, Sophie, identified as a woman, but was sentenced under her birth name, Samuel, where she was given 63 months in prison and five years supervision on release. Good! Both of them. Both of them. 63 months. How many is that? 12? Over five years in prison? Good. Jane knew her kidnapper, which is terrifying in its own right. But imagine waking up to find you're being kidnapped by a total stranger and you've got no idea what they have in store for you. He was driving like crazy. And I couldn't I couldn't talk with him. He didn't wanna stop. I don't know if He's crazy, or what happened with him? When a woman took a nap in a family car at a truck stop in Columbia County, she woke up to find herself in the middle of I don't want to say, don't have a nap in your own, like, if you nap in your car, make sure doors are locked, make sure everything. Make sure you are safe. To the best degree. Don't just assume you're safe because you're in a truck stop. That's not how it works. Make sure doors are locked, make sure whatever, that way if someone breaks in, you know they at least fucking had to struggle to get in there, you know what I mean? of a living nightmare. A man she doesn't know is driving the car and her husband is nowhere to be seen. The last thing she knew, her husband had just gotten out of the car to go into the gas station. She has no idea what happened after that, but knows she has to let someone know what's happening. Luckily, she has her cell phone and dials 911. Patrol cops are immediately notified and set off in search of the stolen vehicle. Uh, you see anything? Thirty-three, thirty-three, just passing SUV. As soon as the officer sees the vehicle they're looking for, he begins pursuit. All police know that the man is refusing to let the woman out of the car. He says he's a truck driver, and a deranged one at that, claiming there's a conspiracy to kill the woman and her husband and Oh god, the guy is so this isn't even the guy who just stole a car to steal a car. This guy like has to do with like specifically took it knowing she was there. 
He's believing there's a conspiracy to kill the woman who he kidnapped and her spouse and insisting that he's her savior. This guy has lost his f mind. This guy ain't in his right mind at all, which is even more dangerous for the woman because she could at be at risk to whatever the hell this guy has planned. And that he's actually saving her life. Obviously, the cops aren't buying this, and the pursuit has to be brought to an end. Somebody can get spikes at 188 and 60, uh, approximately 90 miles an hour. Uh, still not catching the vehicle. No traffic. Roads are clear. Pursuit termination measures will be either active or passive. Active measures are supposed to disable a vehicle either partially or completely. The most commonly used active measure are tire spikes, which is exactly what the officer has asked for. Deploying the spikes can be risky for the officer involved, but are highly effective when used correctly. 65 miles an hour, it's crossing over, back in the eastbound proper lane of traffic, uh, gastro in 60, no additional traffic, Roads are clear. Officer 2, who's this? The guy with the spots? Okay, this is the guy with the spots. You better hurry. You better hurry. You better hurry. You need to get those spots quickly, bro. You need to get it quickly. Don't want to fuck this up. 33, 30 additionally, I don't know if you copied them at 6 0 on glues with spikes. No oncoming traffic, roads are clear. Here's the mis- Okay, I, again, I am not out of law enforcement, so maybe my brain does think, well, people are gonna kinda say I'm wrong with this, which is fine. In my mind, don't have your lights on. Don't give any signal to the person who's coming that you're there. Don't have the lights on or anything. Because if you're in the darkness and uh, the, they might not see you, those lights will give you away. Turn the lights off, throw the spikes down, or put the spikes down, turn your lights off, and just watch and see if it happens. Make sure you're near the spikes, obviously, but, you know, make sure you're not visible. Because the lights being on clearly gives you away, so they know, okay, something must be going on, so they'll be watching. Additionally, for 43, the only tire that should be intact is the rear passenger side wheel. Rear passenger side. Uh, currently approaching units now. What did I say? Didn't get the spikes. You know why? Because he knew they were coming. Because you had the fucking lights on. So it was what? That was a mistake. State patrol. Suspect vehicle just crossed over into the oncoming. Got that one. The spikes worked, but didn't stop him, and he's still driving at a high speed despite having only one tire intact. All the while, his terrified captive cowers for her life in the back seat. If the car doesn't stop soon, then police will have to try another trusted method of ending a pursuit. The pit is dangerous with a kidnapped victim in it. You don't want the kidnapped victim to get hurt in this. Especially because a pit can end badly. That's a dangerous maneuver, so I don't I don't know if that's the best move to go about here. 33-33, I'm behind state, coming up on 188 and County Road V, 56 miles per hour, no oncoming traffic. Vehicle just crashed again. It's back on the road, continuing. Continuing. Yeah, 
The discussion the cops are having is about the precision immobilization technique, otherwise known as PIT. This maneuver has proved highly effective in stopping high-speed pursuits, and it all comes down to science. A patrol car matches the other car's speed, pulls alongside them, and nudges the back end of the car. This, in theory, should make the target vehicle's tires break traction and cause the rear to spin away from the pursuing vehicle. If you're still confused, you're about to see a perfect example of how one should be done. 33, 33. 43 miles an hour, states attempted to hit. CAD update received. kidnap person's okay as long as they don't get hurt that's fine but if they get hurt because your ass does some sh shit Even though the vehicle is disabled, the woman inside is by no means safe, and officers have to act fast to make sure she gets out of this one in one piece. 3331 at gunpoint, have EMS on standby, full airbag deployment. I'm gonna come around this side and we're gonna open that door. I have a cannon, you will get bit. Keep your hands up. Hands are up, I can see hands up. Passenger side, come around and get this. Where's the female at? Hands are up. Back passenger door. Ma'am, come on out. Ma'am, come out. Door can't be open. Put your hands right, up. Right. Show me your Shut hands, ma'am. Come out. Come out slowly. Ma'am, come back. Keep Don't your hands hand. up. Do not move. Slow down. Get her out. Keep your hands there. Do not move. Do not move. It's blocked in. Get her out. All right. Then come around to this passenger door. Put your hands up. Two hands. Back up a little bit, two guys. Hands. Right, I'll go two hands. Guys, two hands. I'll go right, right. Guys, two hands. Not resist. Hands. 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 Finally, the ordeal is over for the missing woman, and a successful rescue is ensured. She has managed to keep police informed during the initial search, pointing out road signs and other features that allowed police to find her and possibly save her life. Thank you so much. Do you want EMS to check out? No, no, I'm fine. Okay. Thank you. Are you sure? Yes, I just care because okay. he was driving like crazy, and I couldn't, I couldn't talk with him. He didn't want to stop. I don't know okay. if he's crazy or what happened with him. Okay. You're okay. I am. Are you sure? Definitely. Okay. I'm just right. scared. I'll be back to talk to you in a few minutes, okay? Okay. My name is Sergeant Stage. You can just call me Ron, okay? Okay. And I kind of started the whole investigation right away. We've been trying to find you really fast. A lot of we you had a lot of people help. Man, okay. I'm so scared. <laughs> Although the kidnapper has yet to be sentenced as of December 2023, he is facing charges of operating a motor vehicle without consent, false imprisonment, operating a motor vehicle while intoxicated, reckless driving, endangering safety, possession of methamphetamine, and possession of drug paraphernalia. With charges like that, he will be facing a hefty prison sentence. Why isn't kidnapping one of them? I guess that's why false imprisonment, but like... His, his goal was to kidnap them, so kidnap her, so... Yeah, that should be on there, but maybe that's, again, maybe that's what false, false imprisonment is their version of kidnapping. But not all missing person cases are so straightforward. Some can be much more of a mystery. Like in the case of the vlogger who may have known more about her missing kids than she was letting on. Oh, 
When a local man answered the door to a 12-year-old son of a popular vlogger, he couldn't believe what he saw. The boy was wounded, malnourished, and begging for help, leaving the neighbors with no choice but to call 911. Tell me exactly what's happened. I just had a 12-year-old boy show up here at my front door asking for help. We know there's been problems at this neighbor's house. He's emaciated, he's got tape around his legs, he's hungry and he's thirsty. Ruby and her business partner Jody ran a podcast on parenting, but the methods she used... Wait a minute, you... T no, she didn't. Don't tell me this dumb bitch. Don't tell me this dumb bitch had a podcast for parenting while she was not giving her children food, water, anything, having them taped around her... And you doing a podcast on parenting, I would love to hear your podcast and what bullshit you are spewing to the world. To discipline her kids were brought into question by many viewers. Ruby ran a strict household and was proud to use severe forms of punishment to keep her kids in line, including denying food and making them sleep on a beanbag. She gained a lot of negative attention because- Oh, it's this chick. The beanbag's what I heard the member. Yep. Yep, I remember this now, because this was getting a whole lot of media, I think Critical did something on this and all that, yeah, I remember this now. ...because of this, and many signed a petition pleading with child services to intervene. Although the investigation never happened, there could be no doubt that something sinister was going on in Ruby's family. So what's going on is we got a call from DCFS because St. George PD um, got a call about two kids that were found in a, locked up in a safe and uh, tied up. Her son had escaped from Jody's house in August 2023 in Ivins, Utah, and his malnourished and beaten body shocked medics. Police were dispatched to Jody's house where they found Ruby's 10-year-old daughter in a similar state of starvation. Police also found evidence of abuse consistent with the injuries both children had, including two pairs of handcuffs, tape, saran wrap, ropes, dressings, and bandages. However, Ruby had four children, and two of them were still nowhere to be found. They were missing for days, and police were growing increasingly concerned about their safety. If the other kids were anything to go off, they might not last long enough to be saved. Eventually, though, a long search led the cops to the home of Pam, a friend and colleague of Ruby's. Well, we have to physically see her. Come to the doorway. We'll go ahead and get the copy of the warrant for you, okay? They have a warrant for my house? Specifically uh, for, for you. For the, yeah, for you and the child. Yeah. Okay. So, what is going on as of right now, stuff? I'll just need you to give your phone to your husband. Okay. Okay. And as of this moment, you're going to be detained right now, okay? Okay. Okay, so, so is, there, is there anything on you? Uh, no. Okay, perfect. Just put your hands in front of you, okay? Just going to place you temporarily under wait, 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 arrest. Wait, 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 okay? wait, wait, wait. I'll explain you to you. That I'll explain what to you. What are you guys doing? I've explained this already. I'm being... As courteous as I can. Okay, okay. well, I'm going to call an attorney. That's fine. I don't know what's Yeah, going I don't on. even know what this is all about. Okay, so I'm going to explain to you when we get to the car. Yes, I just explained to you that you're being detained right now. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you to my car, okay? I need this officer to stay with your husband, and I'm going to explain everything to you when we okay. get there, okay? So what, why do, what do I have to do? Why am I, why am I like this one? I'm not... So, hold on. Cause I need clarification. So was she there continuing the abuse of the daughter and others? Or were they there like actually taking care of her and it's just cause she has the missing child that she goes to jail? I haven't resisted or anything. Because I have to detain you momentarily until I figure out what charges are gonna go with that. So like I said, we were requested by another agency to locate you and detain you temporarily under a warrant to figure out this. He's right there, which means you had her. That makes sense? Yeah, she comes over to my house all the time. I'm going off what you're saying. I'm going off what they're saying. I don't know what's the truth. I know that she's here. I don't know if she came willingly or not. But can't you ask her? That's what we're about to do. Okay. But as of right now, that's why I separated you, because I want the truth. I don't want coercion. I don't want her being felt well, like yeah, she has to say right. stuff. Yeah. All that kind of stuff. Okay, yeah. so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put you in there. We're going to drive back to the front so you can hang out right in front of your house. Thank okay? You. Immediately, one of the kids came out of the house, and the officer separated the two until he could get more information. So I just want, if you can just give me the lowdown of what's going on today, because I, 
I have the agency so that I detain Pam. She's in the back of my car, and then I be in the house in front of me. You in the house? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, give me one second. Okay. We, we have DCFS here. They're on their way. They're going to come pick right now. Okay. So if you can detain Pam still for a minute, and then there, and DCFS will be there in just a minute. Okay. Can you at least give me... A synopsis of what this is in regards to. Uh, yeah. So, so what's going on is we got a call from DCFS because St. George PD had, um, got a call about two kids that were found in a plot of their state and uh, tied up. And um, it's siblings and the suspects are the parents. Yeah. Um, but St. George has mom and dad detained down there, uh, and they are doing some interviews right now to kind of figure out everything that's going on. Um, the, the, there's two, there's one other sibling that we're still looking for, uh, that are, are considered still dangerous, and DCFS has a warrant to take them both into custody and into state's custody. Um, Pam was seen picking up the Springville Rec Center around 115 today, and that's how we had, uh, kind of figured that out and had you guys go out there. So we're still kind of figuring everything out, but that's the, the basis of it is that these kids are, there's a work to take them into state custody. They, a couple of them are found and malnourished and bound and locked in a safe. So, okay. That's where we're at, and then we're still looking for the other one. Police now had to find whether Ruby had intentionally tried to hide her kids away from the police, as it seemed strange that they would travel hundreds of miles away from home to Pam's house just to do some cleaning, as she claimed. And with everything else they know about Ruby, they were sure there was more to this than meets the eye. So today, your daughter in St. George was hugged up with DCFS on a possible child abuse. Okay. My daughters, are you sure you have the right daughter, Stacy Crane? Someone from St. George that has, has their child. No, that's not my daughter. Okay. Well, those officers are on their way up here to talk to you. Okay. okay? And talk to her. Okay. And DCFS is on their way as well. Okay. okay. I'm not here to argue the logistics. No, I know. Those I'm those telling are, you what yeah, I know. Yeah, it's okay. just those would be my granddaughters, and those aren't my granddaughters. Those are my friend's daughters. Okay. To your friend's daughters, then. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Is Ruby Frankie's daughter? Okay. She's. She's a friend of ours. She comes over and helps me every once in a while to do cleaning and stuff. Okay. So this is what happened. Okay. Her parents were in the situation of a child abuse allegation. Okay. DCFS made the report and went to the house and found children malnourished and locked in a safe. Okay. In a safe? In a safe. Okay. So now those officers and the DCFS have to custody those children and we're looking for this one. The rec center, when they went to go find her, said that you picked her up. Yeah. I so did. now they are trying to figure out why, what, I picked her why up. you picked her up, what you know with her, is she okay? Is, is she, did she come here willingly? All that kind of stuff. Okay, okay. yeah, they so can ask So as soon as they that. come here, yeah. we'll be on our way. Okay. Okay, that's why I said you're just detained. You're not placed under arrest just right now until they figure out what's going on with their part. The officer's main concern is now finding out if Ruby's remaining kids are all right and aren't being threatened in any way. I don't know the full details of how mistreated or how malnourished those children mm -hmm. are. Okay. All I know is that's the words and treatment that they used, Yeah. which means that they are severely concerned of her well-being okay. and every child that's in that home. Okay. So they'll just have to talk to her and... Because there has been... I've been a part of many DCFS cases where as soon as the parents are hooked up, kids are taken. If there's any kids that aren't in the home immediately when the kids are taken, guess what? They're scurrying around. Other family members are picking them up that way. The parent can come back and grab them before DCFS takes them. Oh, yeah. I'm telling you, you may be a good person, but there's a lot of people in this world that aren't. Right. Well, if DCFS is supposed to take her, then they can take her. I yeah. mean, I, I'm not going to try to fight that. I mean, I, 
Well, know? that's what they're going to come talk to you about. They left already, so they should be here in the next 10, 15 minutes. But Springville, Springville. just left as I got off the phone with him. So, so he's who, probably going to be about So DCFS or whatever it is is coming? Yeah, so DCFS will come for their part for and then the detective so they're Monfort just going to ask her if she came you. willingly to my house and, and if everything's okay and she has to be taken into state custody oh she does okay because i think her parents were arrested is it possible i could talk to you by my car a little out of so we can just talk yeah no. she can go in and lock the door. go in and lock the door yeah. if this officer goes with you her sure no no she can stay right here on the porch so you can so see, I can her. see her uh-huh absolutely what are you afraid of sir I'm, I'm, I don't know what's going on. So that's what I'm going to brief you on, but I want to say... I'm telling you, I'm answering your question. Okay. I don't, number one, I don't know what's going on. Number two, I don't want Springville to drive up and you guys whisk her away and take her away without giving any information or anything. Okay. And so, uh, number three, her mom isn't here right now, and I feel like... I'm, oh, trust me, there's a reason her mom isn't there right now. I'm kind of trying to protect her from getting into a bad situation. Yeah. That's understandable. That's me. That's understandable. And I don't even know her that well. So I'm going to answer all three of those questions. Pam knows her because she knows her mom. She's very good friends with her. Has known her for a long, long time. If Pam is as good a family friend as he claims, then surely she should have known if her kids were being abused. Friend or no friend, the right thing to do would be to contact the police to save these poor kids. Now that... I disagree. I disagree because there are so there are times where a family has been abused and even her closest friends had no and close friends and even family members had no idea they were abused. I find that unfair to try to put that in a scenario like that, saying if she was a close friend Nate, she'd know they're being abused. That's a load of shit. There have been many times and many abuse cases where the friends and that have no knowledge there was abuse happening. So I don't find that's a fair argument to make. But the girl is away from Ruby. A female officer can try and get her to open up. Is there a reason you're so scared right now? It's, it's us? Okay. Well, I'm sorry if you've had a negative interaction with law enforcement in the past, okay? My intention is not to scare you. Are you okay? Or is there something that I can do to make you not feel as scared right now? Okay. During the questioning, the officer learns that the second missing daughter is also inside the house. All right, sir. So I have a question for you. Pam already told me that house. Can we ask for her to come outside as well? Thank you. You can sit there. Can I sit here? Sure. I do not know the background of the case, but obviously it's serious enough for her to be detained, okay? And for the children to be present. Alright? If I had more information, I'd, I'd give it to you, but I don't. Ruby's 12-year-old son was found to have open wounds with duct tape around them. When asked, he said that his mother and Jody would treat his wounds with pepper and honey. Her son's injury- What the fuck? Arrest that- Arr This girl is insane. This fuck- this Fuck this chick. Fuck this chick. I want my bitch arrested for sure. Injuries were so bad that he was kept under medical supervision for several days after he was found. Let me give you a little bit of backstory of like how this all ended up happening. Is that okay with you? Yeah. Okay. So we got a call from St. George Police Department because there are siblings of uh, were found down there in a pretty distraught condition. Um, that information came to us. We went to Springville, the address they have in Springville. No one's there. Uh, and so then we kind of do some follow-up. We find out that uh, is that the red yeah. Yeah. And mm -hmm. then someone said that you had came to pick her up. Mm -hmm. So based on the conditions that we, uh, the other kids were found. You can, yeah, it makes sense you're concerned uh, about them. Right, yeah. and we don't know you. Right. We don't know what your involvement is with them. We don't know any of that. And 
so and DCFS has a warrant to take these girls into custody, yeah, not into state custody. Yeah, I don't know and everything so, that's happening, but we'll do whatever you want okay. to do. I mean, I just am curious. Um, is there a reason that you went and picked her up today? Yeah. What was the reason you went and got her? Today? She's gonna come clean at my house. She's gonna come clean. Is that something that regularly happens? She yeah, she comes and cleans, or she comes and cans. She comes and does weeds and stuff. And I have company coming tonight from uh, uh, Costa Rica. That's DCFS. Oh, okay. I was gonna say so one of my neighbors. That'd be embarrassing. Yeah. So, so, um, so my friend called me and she said, "Hey, I have a family emergency. I'm going to St. George." Ruby would deny all the allegations against her, and the case was seen as so serious that documents regarding the welfare and placement of Ruby's children were sealed. The courts. I respect that. They're like, we're not give that. That's fine. I'm fine at the fact the media don't get to know like what happened. Look, as long as the children are safe and okay, that's all that fucking matters. Stated this was the only way to ensure a fair and private trial away from the intrusive effects of the media. Remember what I said. So Rachel, I can just call and see how they're doing for you. Yeah, you can, and then I'll check to make sure everything is good. If I call them. The children might not have said much to police at the time, but Ruby's eldest daughter, Sherry, who was away at college, later posted a social media update saying that justice had Today has been a hi all today has been a day. Me and my family are glad just have been served. We've been trying to tell the police CPS for years about this. So glad they finally decided to step up. Kids are safe, but there's a long road ahead. Please give them your prayers and also respect their privacy. Fuck kid A had been served. Only a year earlier, she cut all ties to her family, and it appears the reason was down to the abuse. Both Ruby and- The thought that you would be- she keep- this is my issue. CPS. Job is protect children from abuse. But every case where this happens, and we hear about it, it's always people kept trying and trying and trying and trying to tell them and nothing happens. What the fuck's the point of CBS if they're not gonna look into shit? I don't get it. And Jody remain in custody and have yet to be sentenced, but with six counts of aggravated child abuse against them, it's likely neither of them are coming home soon. And if you thought what? that case was stressful for the cops, imagine being in charge of finding a group of seven-year-old children who wandered off into one of the most dangerous forests in America, where every second is a matter of life or death. On September 30th, 2021, a group of young children went out to explore the forest around their homes, but what they didn't know is that this area is famous for the number of people who go missing there, and the amount of lives it's claimed. The sun was setting, and to the parents' horror, there was still no sign of them, prompting them to call the police who quickly initiated a full-scale manhunt. The cops need to act fast if they're going to find these children alive. Come to me! Yeah, come to me! There's an opening right here! Come on, kids! Come to me! The children had gotten lost on a trail that connected each of their houses, and by this point, they had been missing all night long. Nobody knew what condition they might be in, or if they had even survived through the night. Come on, come on, Timmy! You good, brother, you good. It took me a minute. 86. I have the kids. If you want to track my radio location, I'm going to take them out to 224. Can you have MCHD come over there? They wouldn't let me in over here last night, so I just took off around the back. I've been looking all night long. Yes, sir, I have all Jesus three children. Good, ain't, he? ain't Jesus good? He's good. <laughs> Kids, <laughs> I'm the police. Despite police asking locals not to search the area themselves, one resident knew the land better than anyone and couldn't rest knowing there might be young lives at risk in his backyard. Here, you want my jacket? Hey, Can you wad it up? That's amazing. So this they were like, hey, don't search and this all thing. This one guy's like, hell, I know this place too damn well. I let y'all, I don't, I'm searching until I find these kids. Hands, look at his hands. They were down in the creek bottom all night. Hey, bitch, you 
Actually, it rained like two times. I'm soaking wet and yeah. I put it on. Wrap around here. Wrap your arms around. You got to hold it up. You got it, buddy? All right, come on. Let's get out of these woods. It's a miracle that they all returned safely, but they did exactly what their parents told them to do if they ever got lost. Stick together and wait for help. The local man who found them said they were huddled together under a fallen tree, and miraculously, they seemed almost completely unaffected by it all. We're gonna come out of here as a team. We'll take our time. Do we have to ride in a police car? Because well, I'm the ambulance is probably gonna wanna look at you. Make sure you're good. Well, I'm still good. My leg is... <laughs> <I just> want... <laughs> I love that. Well, I'm still good. I'm good. I'm all right. Gonna take a breather for a minute. Oh, dang it, I'm good? bleeding. Okay, let's go. That's okay. We'll get you. We'll get you a band-aid, Okay. Hi. Yep. Just follow that little that little opening. Let's pick up the jacket, the jacket, buddy. I didn't know that was. Don't get too far ahead, okay? I don't want to lose you again. I can't see the road yet, but we're close. Although the man that found them is called a hero by many, he decided to remain anonymous and was solely focused on getting these kids back to safety. Respect. Come on, kids. Let's come out to the road. I respect that. I respect that. Even the guy who was like, yeah, don't tell them who I am. I don't want any attention on me. The kids are okay. That's all that matters. Oh, good. Yeah. What? There you go, buddy. Look at you. You made it. Hey, ya uh. Good job. Good job, buddy. We made it, huh? Good job, buddy. Yeah. If you enjoy true crime videos like. Ladies and gentlemen, that is it for this reaction video. Let me know what you think in the comments. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you all for the next one.